man who discovered Rod Stewart, the man who discovered Elton John, this, that, and the other. Um, it, I find, I've always got a terror that it's, it's going to backfire on me because, um, you know, I want to be recognized for what I've done. I think blues has always been uh, part of the, 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 the backbone of popular music, if you like. I mean, even going back to the 20s and the 30s, you know, the era of the songwriters, and a bit later too, they were dr drawing on uh, blues themes, certainly um, George Gershwin and uh, uh, Cole, uh, Cole Porter, and, and the list goes on. A lot of the young people growing up at that time, you know, had no idea of what uh, black music was all about. And it was really the whole world changing um, with the civil rights movement and, and the changing, the gradual changing of things hasn't changed far enough, in my opinion, in the States. But um, it was then, I suppose, that uh, uh, blues did become um, a, 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 a recognizable force to be dealt with and to be heard. When the album It Ain't Easy broke, was it released first in Europe or did it have to go to the States? Um, Funnily enough, it's it's starting to be a hit now. It was it, it it was ignored when it was released in '71 there in in England, but of course became a big sensation um, with hundreds, thousands, maybe millions of people over the years in North America, because it somehow <coughs> encapsulated their uh, their high school. Uh, experience at that time. I don't know why so many people, you know, of our age, I guess, come to me and say, oh, this is, you know, this is my, this for me re has always been uh, the memory of my high school years or my early college years. And I had it and I've worn out several copies and blah, blah, this. When's it going to come out on CD? Most people assume that Elton John and Rod Stewart have known each other for ages and ages and ages, but in fact they did not meet until a Christmas party in 1970 at Billy Gaff's basement apartment in uh, Belgravia. Then at this party, uh, Elton got to hear that uh, he's met Rod, oh, they're both thrilled to meet each other, uh, yakety yakety yak. Then it turns out, oh, you're, you're going to be producing uh, John's album? Oh, I'd love to get involved too. So anyway, it turned out they, they did a, a side each. But I got all the Rod stuff out of the way first. In many ways, the Rod sides were a blueprint for his later recording, Every Picture Tells a Story, because uh, uh, most of the musicians were the same people who were used on that album. Uh, including Ray Jackson from Lindisfarne on mandolin, uh, who was on so Sammy Mitchell on slide guitar. The list goes on. I don't think Muddy ever opened for them, but certainly um, uh, John Lee Hooker, um, Ike and Tina Turner on, on, on quite a few occasions. So the Stones were very, very responsible for opening people's eyes to where they had gotten their influences originally. And I think, you know, um, people should always uh, give the, the, so, the Rolling Stones that, that due recognition for the, the good pioneering work that they did. And I suppose I've uh, achieved a degree of respect simply because I've been around so long now and, and survived. Whereas many of my, uh, the people from my generation, uh, you know, fallen by the wayside, uh, passed on, you know, through old age or self-abuse or whatever. Um, I mean, the next generation, they're still in pretty good shape, the Claptons and the Rods and, the, you know, whoever else. Oh, we went everywhere. I mean, I've been to probably more places in the States and Canada come to that than, than, than anybody else ever. I mean, there's not one city or tiny village that's been ignored on my itineraries uh, over the years.